and like been all proper. <laughs> how are you, my love? Very formal. We're just trying to kind of feel normal, like how we normally feel at work, getting ready, part of yeah. our day, part of what I makes. Have you been fun. wearing perfume? Because today I realized that mm. I haven't been wearing perfume, and I was like, but I love perfume. Yeah, I've like. Yeah, so today is the first day in I think twenty days I've worn perfume. <laughs> okay, Tammy, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, tell us all how have you? I know how you've been, but how have you been? Uh, very chill. Yeah, I'm really resting it out, relaxing, uh, doing things that really mean something to me. Um, yeah. Watching a lot of content online. Um, yeah, it's it's. I'm cooking a lot. Like I'm seeing your posts, so I know you're cooking as well. But, yes. Uh, I mean, I didn't really know that I would enjoy this this much. Like, um, I mean, I knew that I would. I I'm I'm, I'm a foodie, so I like to eat. But I didn't know yeah. I like to cook so much. Uh, yeah. But I could see you liking it because it's like very, it's it's creative and it's meticulous, which both things you love. So I think it's not a surprise that you like it. No, but actually, I find it a very um, instinctive process, which I'm quite surprised about. Although there is a lot of measurement involved, but then yeah. again, sure that when they say one cup of something, it could also mean your the cup size in your house is different than what is in their house. So my cup is always extra large. I'm like, oh, maybe so not that cup. cup. I said my cup is always really large, and I'm like, maybe not my cup. Yeah, so I mean, how do you like judge? Uh, so I think I I discovered how to kind of maneuver things in the kitchen. I didn't know where anything was, uh, yeah. kept in the kitchen, but now I know. Yeah, so, that's great. That's amazing. So I wanted to start with you, Shrut, because you cook so well and you cook such great food and you cook such healthy options, and uh, and you are like you know you are the queen of your house. You do your own thing, and I love that about you. You're so thank you. Um, you know you're um. I mean, for people who don't know you, you're so domesticated. You're someone who's so caring, so loving. Um, Thank you, baby. And the effort you take into detail, which is something that I really, really appreciate, and that's and that's something that was a huge revelation to me also when I kind of uh, spent time with you. Uh, I, I know you're someone who's you know um, such a home bird, someone who really like. Because it's a lot of work. Like, Tell me that's supposed to be a secret. A I'm supposed to be a badass outsider. And you're like, what a cheer girl. You know, like, yes. uh, for, the, for the number of times you've called me a good girl, I think uh, you're the OG good girl. <laughs> <laughs> just like in a, in a slightly like, in just like grungy clothes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, the, the OG good girl in grunge. I love it. <laughs> so, darling, I wanted to start today's talk. As you know, we've been... You know, I've been having chats with all these different women. Yeah. And I was Sorry, thinking about what... I'm going to increase the volume. Okay, go, ahead, go ahead. Keep talking. Keep talking. Okay. Sorry. Technologically challenged. So do Good. So, you know, I was thinking about what do I talk to Tami about? And when I think with the women I've chatted with, I'm like very close to you and Priyanka, I would say. So it was hard for me to think of what to talk about with both of you, right? Because we've shared so many topics. But I think when it comes to you and me, the thing that really strikes me and something I'm very proud of is the sisterhood. And like, yeah. you know, it's easy for women to say, we should stand up for each other. We shouldn't drag each other down. We should be like fully with it. And I I'm sure we found it difficult. Like, I know you are like, you know, you know, you're like Mahatma Gandhi, Dalai Lama and female form. You're generally like zen about everything. But there are times where I've told you like, tell me, I really think that the, the way this person conducts themselves or what they do behind someone's back is like not okay. The good thing is we always come back to ourselves and we come back to our bond and we yeah. come back to our positive, you know, circle with each other. So I, I never asked you this, but how do you think it is that both of us who on paper are completely different and opposite. It's yeah. like we're two different sides of the color spectrum on like if we were paint colors, we'd be like opposite spectrums. How do you think it is that we manage to form this bond? Is it because of the differences? So what I feel is um, we are extremely different as people, but intrinsically we seek the same thing. And that yeah. is um, becoming a more um, 
a more authentic version of ourselves yeah and why we do that i guess the only way to actually truly do that is to accept um yourself as who you are and also constantly accept other people with the fact that you might actually not like everything about them yeah and because c- c- we are trying to constantly accept other people the way they are uh i think i think that's a big common uh, common aspect of the both of us i don't think we are that judgmental of what i have seen of i think we both come to uh, we discuss 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 and then we're like okay you know what Re- really still having a comment is unfair so i guess i think somewhere we bond on that part that um we have an opinion but we're still we like we we are not like trying to shove it into anyone's face no so, um so i might have a different set of opinions uh, which have been uh, because of my kind of upbringing or because of my kind of life or, or personality you have your set of opinions but it's never thrusted upon each other or other people that we interact with i think i right. think that's the reason why we bond so so well even though we are apparently so different yeah and it just outside of you and me i know that you have a very very close group of female friends so and um, there are people sometimes that you work with and people that you've known for years as i know what is it about this collection of you know i think there's three women in your life that you're very very close to like excluding your mom what is it and what does this support system mean to you because you're someone who works very 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 hard not that the rest of us don't work hard but there's something about the way you work that makes me feel like you know you are the german model car and i'm really not so <laughs> that's rubbish rude so anything <laughs> but what does this this um collection of women in your life mean to you to be honest if you ask me i think you work way uh, way more hard than i do because for me a large part of my life is taken care of by i mean i don't know what it is with me but i have a lot of people babying me including you you yeah know, i guess one of the one of the yeah stories. you do have like a I, i have that i have that vibe that whenever anyone looks at me they just want to baby me and i and i to be honest i am not complaining about it so <laughs> so i very strategically find these friends who will just love me to bits and just take care of me and love me and spoil me and you know it all kind of works out in my favor <laughs> well that's lovely and and these these group of women what do they bring to your life do, do they bring a safe space where you can be honest with them without judgment and you can leave your work behind or can you discuss your work with them oh uh, well whoever i'm really close to it's because i am i i i really like those people as the people they are like what they do for a living or what i do for a living is often kind of forgotten in the process whenever we interact with each other yeah which and is not always about just spending time like i think that is something like for me i can i can be in a traffic and have a lot of fun if i'm with like say you or if i'm say if i'm with billy or disha who are like my closest of friends you know so i i don't really need uh i don't really need to be in a very beautiful location or beautiful place mm. maybe that's the reason i'm so peaceful at home that i i don't feel i'm i don't feel like i'm missing out too much because i'm i'm happy with the people i'm surrounded by so i think essentially yeah. it's important that whichever women you surround yourself with or whichever people rather you surround yourself with should just be people who add value to your life and add value mm. to you without really I mean, whenever you have to put effort, I feel like it never works out. It has to be people who are like organically in your life, and yes. uh, who mean well. And I think one has to be. I think in today's time, a better judge of these things, like who you have in your in inner circle or who you have as your close people. I think yes. one has to be aware of that. Yes, absolutely. And the the other thing I wanted to ask Clara, stop it. Sorry, she's just acting like so psycho. You think it's part of her life? <laughs> so. Uh, I wanted to ask you like you know something I've noticed about you before we became friends is you seem someone to to be someone who is quite positive in control and quite um stable in all your reactions and with quarantine is the first time where I've actually seen you be like ah oh, it's like it's good for me and yeah. you've been more expressive about what this time means to you and we were doing another interview and you said something really nice where you said people had forgotten how to daydream and yeah. that you had on a summer vacation when you were lying down just like with hours to spend with no agenda realized that oh i may want to be an actor i may want you know i like cinema and entertainment this is what i might want to do 
are there any revelations that have come to you now in another phase of your life with this quiet time that you've had you know that's the thing with uh, um uh, times like these you know it's you can't pressurize yourself again to again it's a kind of pressure that we put on ourselves right hey yeah. this should be productive hey i have so much free time let's make sure it means something and i feel like yeah. the more we are trying so hard to make it productive i think the the lesser possibility of it being productive it is so i mean yeah. although this is this is a this is a realization i have that this free time could yield this but i don't think i am pushing too hard towards it i i might not my, nothing might get revealed in this process i might still just end up doing a lot of more acting that i've been doing in for, for the, in the movies that i do uh i i don't know it might yield into something else but i'm not putting that pressure on myself because i think that's essentially what we all do and that's something that i realize is definitely a mistake and i, I and i think after the whole i i hope i hope after everything just settles down and becomes okay i yeah. i would not i would really calm the shit down <laughs> like a bit of Arabic. Yeah, because I think like the control, the illusion of control has completely been removed for all of us. Yeah, like it's like just shut up, like just yeah. sit, like stop. And what you're saying is beautiful, which is like don't feel pressured by others' um, image of like you know people are like you must have written so many songs in quarantine. I haven't been able to write anything new except like maybe half a verse of a new song. because i'm not feeling productive i mean this is probably the downtime you need because we are we all uh, when we are in work mode then we automatically gear up differently but sometimes yeah, the downtime is like the <clears throat> is like the build up which you're not even it's just very subconscious it's not something you're consciously trying to achieve but that no conscious time out actually helps right and like again you know when you're saying don't go by other standards you see something that you know in quarantine as people are like oh i'm just going to get fat cuz i'm sitting and eating or oh i'm going to have like you know buns of steel and flaming abs by the time i'm done with this and you're like huh but something about working out fitness diet is something that we've always spoken about and for yeah. those who don't know we don't talk about this like two boring actresses the truth is we both love food and we both struggle with being fit and being slim because there are certain expectations of us also our, will, our job is visual right so i think visual exactly and exactly. that is isn't i think more over than just like being obsessive about being thin i think it's exactly because, probably if we want such a visual medium i don't think we would obsess as much i think i don't know if you agree with me but i think even among actors and actresses there are those of us who do it because we're like yeah we understand we're in a visual medium but we're going to eat what we like and we're going to do it and we don't get like cuckoo about it but there are people bless them what they do is amazing but they're like on another extreme it's like two peas one carrot and 40 uh, 40 minutes of cardio every day and you and i couldn't do that the other thing i realized is i remember telling you this once when i was first doing luck and era marivan i never used to eat much i used to eat very little and i used to work out a lot and i used to be permanently in a bad mood because it was just it just made me a bad person Yeah, and now over the years, I've realized, and I think the people watching have realized, we fluctuate. There are a number of reasons why we fluctuate, and now there's a nice balance that I've struck between saying the vanity of what not what we feel, but what people want to see on screen, plus me actually enjoying fitness as a good place. And I've seen that you now enjoy talking about fitness and food and what, especially diet and what you're eating. So do you want to tell us a little bit more about your journey through finding this place with health and food? Like any other actor I feel like there have been moments where I would have you know felt the pressure or felt like that moment where I need to really make yeah. sure that I'm looking the part that I need to that I need to look but I never yeah. in my career opted for any extreme measure and that was yeah. more than um more than a time but it was more out of just basic functionality i could not function on little food or uh, i couldn't function yeah. in extreme i was put in an extreme situation so growing up i yeah. was a really uh, really weak kid uh, so i had to really build up my uh, um, you know stamina my immunity everything because huh. i was fall sick really often so huh. um, so i took a lot of my growing up years to fitness so 
I knew that if I would take like a shortcut to any of these things, I mean, I mean, which would which would not even be like the professional uh, repercussions of that are different, but like it would really like ruin me as a person. So I never took up with anything extreme, but yes, I think I really experimented with different kinds of um, uh, at that point of time diets because mm. for better in like knowledge at that point of time, I thought you know experimenting with different diets would you know yield me the result I want. But I think mm. in the past two two and a half years, uh, my perspective towards food, fitness, um, immunity, uh, health has changed considerably mm. because I realized that. I was yo-yoing so much that I was really fed up of it. Like I think a lot of us experience that. You're like you're thin in one day, and then the other day you're like really fluffy, and then you know you're just kind of variating, and that's really, it's really uh, disturbing. I think it disturbs. Would really make me feel. Uh, mm-hmm. So I really work towards. I think I figured I need to do something that's sustainable. I can't do something that keeps making me change. Um, So sure. I just uh, got on to um, you know a very holistic kind of uh, health journey where I began yeah. to eat food that actually suit me. Like I discovered I was gluten and dairy intolerant. Uh, yeah, and I feel like I had I I when I was a kid and mom and I was this were discussing this that we have to really be sensitive towards kids when they say that they don't like certain food. Hundred percent, because then it's not like just. Um, You know, just keep quiet and finish your roti. Maybe they don't. I never liked rotis growing up. I always felt yeah. like ulti is coming, and no one took it seriously. And now, yeah. as an adult, I'm like, oh, I actually don't. I genuinely don't process gluten properly. Yeah, it's when you yeah. don't digest something, your body just rejects it. And I think kids are, I think kids are more sensitive to that. Like you know, at that age, yeah. you know, like why, why are you not eating certain things? I feel now you're like, oh, you know, yeah, chai, I'm not eating. Hai. All that drama should not happen. I think you should really be. You should really listen to your body. Something because it's you know it's time. I think sensitive. I think compassion towards your own self leads to better health. Absolutely. Now I wanted to ask you if there's something you could tell twenty-year-old Tamanna that you know now that you didn't know then. What would it be? I'm sorry, the network was a tad bit poor. You have to repeat that. I said, if there was something you could tell twenty-year-old Tamanna that you know now that would help her, what would that be? Worried so tell her not to worry. I was very worried about how life will pan out, and uh, if I could go. in any way uh right just kind of uh, do what you have to do but not to excessively think because i feel like i am in the future that i was i was worrying about i am right now there and yeah you know we hit with a pandemic and there's nothing much we can do about it so that the pandemic really puts things, things in perspective sorry i said the pandemic really puts things in perspective like you didn't see this yeah, so kind of coming yeah very, uh, Is very mental and in your head. And what is one quality that twenty-year-old Tamanna had that you would like to bring back into your life now? For some reason, I'm not on second. Mm. Can you hear me, darling? Yeah, I sorry, I, I'm losing you when you ask the question. So sorry. So I said that you know, like, what is a quality that you had when you were twenty years old? That maybe you've lost, or maybe has eroded a little bit. That you would love to bring back now. Um, I think I was I was way more meticulous. I was I was obsessive. Really, obsessive crazy. I was. I mean, I think now I've become a little bit like I won't say complacent, but I've become a lot more chilled out, which works in many things. But then I Is see this like chilled out Tamanna. I was, like I was a stickler. I was. I think I would obsess over. Oh, five minutes late means I, I would drive myself crazy and everyone else crazy. That sometimes works. Like in a very professional environment, I think that 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 is a key ingredient in doing well and being successful in life. I think being disciplined or being, you know, uh, meticulous sometimes that is what it. And some, it, I mean, everything to go, everything to happen, like the universe to kind of help you do everything. 
but i still feel you do need to have that element of um you know discipline which will actually yes. get you being in the industry for 10 years and you've been here longer and i think it's a combination of like patience and courage because like the industry erodes your personality sometimes to a level where you have to be patient and you have to be not flustered by waiting not flustered by other people's judgments but over time and being here long enough it has also given sense of courage saying no now after having done everything you all wanted me to i can be courageous enough to be myself what are the two things that you have learned being in the entity um uh, shoots for some reason now uh, i'm uh, uh, like half your questions are coming broken uh, can you hear me so darling now so i i assume yeah, i can hear you right now i can hear right now. i assume you asked me uh, uh, what have i learned two things that i have learned being in the entertainment business is, is that what you asked yes that yeah. right um just feel like the fact that there is an extra mold that people want you to be in but at the same time the only way you can be successful in the entertainment business is by being you so there is a there will always be this battle between the mold and uh you know uh that place where you are you and you can and i think so it's very important that as an actor or as an for a creative person in the entertainment business um should experience and i'm guessing if you're there long enough you would experience that um uh you know two sided uh thing in in our... mm, another would be um i think dream big like that's something i of people like do not do not think that this is not something that will happen uh, i think don't limit yourself to do think big and to imagine big and to you know to dream uh, to kind of uh, um you know restriction in your head yes as always my positive lovely tammy what do you have to say to everyone who's quarantined at home who loves you and who is watching you now for some reason i'm losing you what do you have to say to everyone at home who's watching you and who loves you in quarantine uh i want to say that um use this time do whatever you guys need to do the uh, thank you for all the love you guys have showered me and on shoot it's like for so many years and that means a lot to us and i feel like we, i think we both essentially feel the same way yeah. that we've been extremely yeah. fortunate with the way people have constantly like supported us and yeah. us so i i think a huge yes. uh, thank you to all the audiences and especially to all, all those hearts and uh, that's really really sweet now then and thank you shoots for doing this um i've been watching your lives myself and they actually are really incredible because all the women you got on uh, to talk um uh, has something really really inspiring to tell thank you and you have been inspiring to me as always thank you for doing this today love you lots and thank you for coming here and speaking with me love you shoots see you soon bye everyone bye bye guys bye